My name is Gao Arapali. I'm an associate professor in medicine in the Division of Hematology in the Department of Medicine at Duke University Medical Center. I'm Dr. A. Koneti Rao. I'm from the Lewis Catt School of Medicine at Temple University in Philadelphia. Doctors Arapali and Rao are among the authors contributing to the blood review series on clinical platelet disorders. The review series that I've seen in blood are excellent, concise reviews of pertinent topics in hematology, um, and I've found them very, very useful as a quick way of getting up to speed on different hematologic topics. I think this combination of the clinical component uh, and the science that goes in on those disorders uh, has made the series very effective, and I'm sure uh, it's appreciated by a large uh, group of people who are members of the society. I was invited to submit a review on heparin-induced thrombocytopenia for the Clinical Platelet Disorders Review Series in Blood. Um, so my paper gives an overview of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia from its initial descriptions in the 1950s to our current understanding of the disease. And it tries to blend in a mixture of basic and translational research that is going on in this disease area, as well as diagnosis, testing, and management of the disease. HIT turns out to be a model immune disease for study. It is has a defined antigen. We know what the antigen is that triggers the disease. We know the time span um, during which this disease occurs, and we have a good understanding how, of how the clinical manifestations present. I've been working on heparin-induced thrombocytopenia since my fellowship, and soon after finishing my fellowship, um, we discovered a unique monoclonal antibody that recapitulates um, the uh, antibodies that are associated with this disease. And most recently, I think the most exciting uh, research discovery that's come out of my lab has just been in this past year, where we have uncovered a major mechanism uh, we believe is responsible um, for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. And so we have made this observation that complement plays a significant role um, in turning on the immune system. And we think that this is gonna open up a lot of uh, new areas of investigation um, as to how this drug allergy occurs. Our group, particularly my lab, has had a long-standing interest in uh, disorders, inherited disorders of, of platelets, and uh, particularly those who have defects in platelet function and uh, abnormalities in platelet number. Uh, I was asked uh, to write a review on the inherited disorders of, of platelets, we focused on uh, some of the newer advances that have occurred. In fact, in most patients who have inherited defects of platelet number or function, the molecular mechanisms, the genetic mechanisms are unknown even today. And it's becoming clear that in some of these patients, the variants, the mutations occur in proteins called the transcription factors which are proteins that bind to the, to the DNA and regulate gene expression. So this review now covers those abnormalities, particularly in a transcription factor called RUNCS1, that's been of interest for many years in my lab, but also covers work of a lot of investigators across the globe in terms of uh, other transcription factors and those that have been discovered, particularly in the last 10 years. Overall, from a clinician's perspective, the understanding is why do they have abnormal function? And in some of these cases, knowing the mutation also leads to recognizing other features such as the association with leukemia or association with uh, hearing loss and so on in terms of syndromes. I think the topic of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia was selected for this review series because it remains a very clinically relevant disease. Um, and there's a lot of exciting research going on. We think that this is possibly the tip of the iceberg in terms of how drug allergens work. So we think our findings have relevance not only for our immediate research at hand on heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, but possibly to other drug-induced allergies 
and or other allergic responses, whether they're drug-induced or autoimmune in nature. So I just think the next few years of research in this area are really going to clarify how significant a, a finding this may be. To put it in a broader perspective, a lot of hematologists see patients who have bleeding disorders. Many are some related to platelet abnormalities. And within that context, the question is, what are those genes? If one knew the mutation or variant that leads to a specific defect, it provides insights into the normal mechanisms that operate in platelets. And this information then becomes useful to develop newer antiplatelet and antithrombotic agents uh, for treatment of diseases such as stroke and cardiovascular disease. So I think the overall significance is you understand the disease process, you understand what happens in normal biology, and then build on that to develop newer therapeutic agents for various other diseases, including arterial and venous diseases. I think we are on the cusp of some important discoveries in this area. The progress has been tremendous, very impressive, but there's a lot more to be done.